You're live. All right. Hello and <laughs> welcome to Joanne's Healing Within. I am your host, Joanne Angel Barry Cologne, your certified personal trainer, intuitive healer, cosmic energy reader, a student of astrology and master of numerology. And I'd like to remind you to share, like, and comment on today's show as we have an amazing show today. But before we dive into all of that, I'd like to give a shout out to my advertising sponsors that make this show happen every week. And there is an advertising flyer that gives you their contact information should you wish to reach out to any of them. But let's start off with Gail Nicholson. She's our resilient coach and metaphysical practitioner. Then we have Diana Brad, which is our business consultant for small businesses. Irene Rodriguez is our healer, creator of the Waste Beads and the Torah Wellness Advocate. Nick Grafter, he's our real estate agent and journalist. Then we have Alex Petito, which is our leading shamic priestess of wealth and well being. Tammy Moses, which is our master encouragement officer. And last but not least, which is our guest for today, which is Dr. Robert Garcia. He's the warrior strategist. And we're gonna be talking today about some amazing business um, possibilities and the do's and don'ts. But we're gonna to get to that in a little while. But before we do, just wanna go over some insight for today. Did you know that we are currently in Mercury retrograde? Yes, again, Mercury will stay retrograde until November 4th. Mercury is our planet of communication scheduling, planning, technology. So make sure you're booting up, backing up and supporting your technology, computers, cell phones, whatever have you, with some clear quartz crystals on the side, keep them up and activating. And also, we just came from a beautiful new moon on uh, this past Friday, October 16th, which is in the energy of Libra. There's still plenty of time to utilize your new moon rituals by setting new moon intentions. Those intentions are powerful. The new moon's energy stays with us for about six months. So there's lots of energy that goes on and a great opportunity to really sit and evaluate what new intentions you wanna bring into your experience. The energy of a new moon, um, when we think about it, we have a new moon every 28 days, but the energy and the power of this new moon lasts a lot longer. I'd like to also set the intention for today in regards to what we need to hear. What chakra do you want to work on to align your energies to attract the things in your business after all? That's what we're going to be speaking about today. And what number is going to provide a hidden message? So let's see what we could going on here. Let's shake it up. Shaking it up. Let's see what we need to know. All right, the card for today. What's showing up for today? Interesting enough, the cards in reverse. In reverse, and the reverse cards mean that it's something we really need to hear today, but perhaps you might have a little resistance behind it. Our message is creativity, creativity. How can you be more creative in your business? How can you utilize your creative juices to align yourself with the exact clientele you're looking to bring in, whether it's clients, patients, or customers, whatever your term may be for your business? Using creativity is powerful. When we think of the word creativity, I'd like you to take a minute. What, what, does, what comes to mind when you think about creativity? How can you use your creativity? Does it show up by writing, dancing, singing, painting, cooking? Whatever it might be, what is your creativity? And stepping into that more, this way here you can literally activate all the greatness within you. When we are in our creative juices, it literally helps us to activate all the greatness that we have within us. The chakra associated is yellow. Now, those of you who are aware of your solar, your, um, I gave the answer away, your chakras, it's your solar plexus. Your solar plexus is all about your intuition, in your limitations or your unlimited possibilities and abundance. And as I mentioned today, we're gonna to be speaking about business. So I'd like you to have, have open up the mindset of this unlimited possibilities and that you deserve abundance in your business. Let's talk about the number. The hidden message here, the number is six, six. 
So when we think about six in numerology, six is the healer, the nurturer, and how we heal ourselves and how we heal our business. And in this particular point of time with the pandemic and all that's been going on over the last eight months, we've had a lot of time to reflect and sit quietly and ask, how can we do business differently? How can we do business in a more heartfelt way? How can we do business that we are extremely successful? Now, perhaps for whatever the reasons are, you might have a blockage to having a successful business. You may be a really great business person, but you have something blocking you from being successful at your business. That's an easy, easy, tweezy, peasy healing process to go through. And yes, I said all that. It's a really easy way to healing that process of if you do have a, a blockage against success something we can easily work on very quickly, dealing with the solar plexus, connecting into your solar plex and really asking yourself, do you feel worthy of abundance? What does abundance look like for you? And how would you like to attract that? Because you are the creator to your success. You are the creator to the, the customers that walk through your door. Whether you actually have a storefront or if you're doing business remotely, you are the creator those, to those exact clients coming in. So. What do you want to create in your business line? How do you see that? How do you see your abundance? What is the, uh, the attached um, outcome financially for you? And how are you gonna use that finances for your highest good? All this gets into account when we think about feeling worthy of it. Whereas if for whatever the reasons are, you're feeling blocked. These are things I'd like to invite you to ask yourself in regards to what does abundance look like? And what kind of clientele do I want to attract? And get into that mindset of creating just that for yourself so you can begin to heal whatever abundance blocks you may have going on. The number 6-6, six, six, when we think about the number 6-6, six, six, that's a power number, which means there's a lot of power behind that 6 because it's a double 6. When we translate that down to a single digit, it works out to be a 3 energy. 6 and 6 is 12 works out one, two, three, everything in perfect order when we think about it. So when you're seeing the number six, six, know that the message there is that everything is in perfect order as you begin to heal your mind, body, and spirit. And healing through creativity, trusting that you deserve to have financial abundance in your business. That's our message for today. It's a very powerful one. So with that all being said, again, I'd like to remind you to share, like, and comment on today's show. We're going to be taking a quick commercial break. And when I come back, I'm going to be introducing you to my amazing guest. I've been looking forward to having this guest on my show for quite some time. And we're going to be diving into business. So make sure you have pen and paper so you can take down some notes or come back and just re-watch the show again and again and again as much as you like. We'll be right back. Hey everybody, Rob the Warrior Strategist coming at you from San Diego, California. And if you want help developing your own income streams and entrepreneurial systems, feel free to reach out to me at dragonsgold76 at gmail.com. Thanks. Are you ready for solutions and connections? If so, I can help. Hi, I'm Tammy Moses and I help the peripheral people resolve hoarding issues in a holistic way. I would love to connect with you and learn more about how I can help in your unique situation. Please send me an email to the hoarding solution at gmail.com. I look forward to connecting with you. Hello and welcome back to Joanne's Healing Within. For those of you who are just joining, remember to share, like, and comment. Know that we are on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, and YouTube. So if you did not catch the beginning of our show, you can go back later. But stay here with me now because I have my amazing guest. Before I introduce you to him, just want to recap on our card for today because I think it's appropriate for what we're going to be talking about. Creativity. How you use your creativity to tap into business success what that creativity looks like for you, whether it's dancing, singing, playing music, baking, whatever it is, tap into it. Solar plex energy, trusting your intu intuition and trusting that you deserve financial abundance and financial wealth in your business. Six, six means you are healing. You're healing your mind, body and spirit so you can be aligned to that financial 
abundance in business. And I'm going to leave you with that and dive right into my guest for today. I am here to excitedly introduce you to Dr. Robert Garcia, who is our warrior strategist. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much. I, I don't even know what to say after an intro like that. And I am blown away at the card you pulled and that it matches the walls. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 it does. Yes, every, every once in a while that does happen. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Yes. Yes. And when I pulled the card today, I was like, oh, that's so appropriate in regards to the topic for today. And of course, all the other information that comes is all intu intuition that shows up. Yeah. But I thought it was appropriate in reference to where we're going to be going. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, I just want the viewers to really get to know who you are and um, why you do what you do. So I want to dive into the first question that um, you provided me with is what were some of the challenges you face? as a young man or a young person? Uh, yeah, I, I grew up in a small logging town and almost all of my relatives had substance abuse or alcohol problems uh, severely. And I didn't have a lot of stability. I didn't have a lot of uh, money. I didn't, I, I just tried to, to get through. I had a severe learning disability. And so I failed out of high school and then I failed out of two colleges as a young adult. So I had a very tricky start to my life and um, that, that led me into my, my mid-20s where things started to turn around. Interesting. And, and, and as you share that about with school, but yet you have doctor in front of your name. So we're going to have to dive into that a little bit more because that's an interesting concept that you were, you know, you failed in high, high school, you said, and you didn't make it yeah. through two times in college. Two colleges, two different yeah. colleges, yeah. Yeah, so what inspired you to go, to, go further and become a doctor? Um, well, I, I got out of the military, uh, joined the Air Force at 19, or sorry, 21. And then I, I, when I left the military, oddly enough, I became a high school teacher and, uh, <laughs> then, and then enrolled in grad school. And by then, I was starting to understand the ways that I learn. And so it's funny that you picked that card of creativity because being creative is the way that I overcame my learning disability. So I started to figure out that I could understand things a lot better if I drew pictures if I used colors, if I listened to music while I was learning, um, a lot of shapes, a lot of diagrams, things like that. And that's really how I encompass learning rather than sitting in a classroom, um, not understanding real world application or being bored by a lecture. Yeah, and I think that's so appropriate right now with what's going on in our world in regards to really getting teachers to understand that stu all, all students do not learn the same way. So I think that's a, a perfect and beautiful um, message you're sending out to letting people know that, hey, you know what? Maybe you need a lot of noise around you and color to learn where I need to be in pure quietness and no distraction for when I'm learning. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, and that's the funny thing, Joanne, is that people either, I find that they learn one of two ways. They either need some type of stimulation, a mild amount. So I like, my ideal environment is Starbucks with headphones on because I have a little bit of movement. I have some music to kind of align me. And that's when I really pick up stuff and can just get into that zone. Whereas you, if you want complete and utter silence, some people really get that too, because that's how they focus in their tunnel vision. So it's always interesting to hear the answer to that question. Exactly. And interesting enough, as you said, you're wearing headphones in Starbucks. Now, a part of my learning is gaining intuitive download and I find if I put earphones in my ears, I can't hear a spirit guide. Mm. So it literally blocks off my wisdom that shows up because I cannot hear spirit guide. So I always have to keep my ears open so I can actually hear what's being downloaded, which theoretically, when we really think about it regarding spiritual communication, I don't think it actually really comes from the ears. I think it's all intuitively downloaded. But if I plug in my ears, I can't hear anything. Yeah, it's almost, it's almost like taking the radio dial and taking it off station. I, I, I totally can understand that because usually when I have my best thoughts, it's, it, it's walking at the beach or it's walking in the woods somewhere without music where I can just enjoy the, the natural sounds. And that's when I have some of my best ideas for sure. Exactly, exactly. So before we dive into your, your um, second question that I have here, one of the questions I'm really curious on is, where did your passion come from in regards to being successful in business? Um, the real passion is 
watching other people grow, watching people like you that work really hard and finally can get into their niche and really create something amazing. You know, I look at all the stuff you've done, the quality of your videos, like all these amazing creative interests. And my real passion for my own success comes from when I can get somebody to have that light bulb in business. So maybe they've had a tough couple months. They're not making a ton of money. They're very talented, but they just, maybe they're just need a little boost in social media or they need to learn how to do like, like some interviews or, you know, just something. And when I can provide that answer for them using my own uh, intuition, that's when I really, really am in attunement with my business. Awesome. Yeah. One of the things I've come to learn, and I'm hearing this a lot on Facebook from different um, other gurus for that matter, is when, when, when one starts to focus on being successful in reference to really owning their purpose and power, and it's not about being successful about the dollar amount, is when they actually become successful for the dollar amount. Yeah. It does trails. that make sense to you? It, abs it absolutely does. The people that go out just chasing money are often very miserable because you have to do some, you have to really do awful things um, that are not, not in tune. If I really want to be rich, I could just go be an investment banker. I, I could just go do like high-end real estate or get a corporate job that I would hate, or I'd be a lawyer. But the fact of the matter is by naturally chasing the, the growth and the success and the relationships with others and helping them to grow my own my own bank account, my own everything is lifted up and it's in a much more positive fashion. Yes, so true, so true. So now I love the way our, our, our conversation just like leads into the questions. So in regards to why do you think people fail at their goals? People fail in their goals out of fear usually because it's much, if you really think about it, giving up on a goal, something that, that's, that's uh, challenging to do in your own mind, is actually a form of, of relief because when people set goals, it's usually to do something they haven't done before. It's usually to do something that's a change in their life. It's ascendancy, it's, it's up leveling. And so when people fail or they just give up, it's actually taking away their uncertainty because failing, believe it or not, provides certainty and no change, but it also keeps you locked in where you're at. So, so it's just, it's mainly fear, Joanne. Yeah. yeah, and I, I truly believe that the only way one really fails, so to speak, at their goal is when they don't try. I agree. Yeah, so if someone tries, and of course, yeah, you know, maybe they have that, that fear of like, oh my God, like, what if it doesn't work? But then you know what? What if it does? You know? I'm gonna, so, I'm gonna share something really, really interesting. I had a talk with someone about the other day is that if you really look at all the stuff, all your goals or whatever it is that you're kind of risking putting out there, the downside is not nearly as bad as you imagine it to be. And, and I've really been thinking about this, all the things I've ever done, you know, launching a course, creating a magazine, writing a book, all that stuff. What's the downside if it doesn't work out? I lose some time, who cares? And, and yeah. it, just, it just, I feel like more people should really, before they give up, start thinking, okay, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? And usually it's, it's not that bad. Yeah, yeah. And, and maybe, I mean, when you think about it in that perspective, it's maybe, yeah, you lose time, but just think about all the people you've come in contact with in the process of w trying to reach that goal, whether it yeah. succeeded or not, but all the people you connected with to get to that place. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's, there's intrinsic benefits, even from failure, even from not succeeding at something. As long as you try, you are going to attract more people into your life. You are going to have people jumping in and other opportunities are going to arise. So you might as well go for it. Exactly. I was just about to say in reference to something, something that we might have in our mind in reference to something we want to accomplish. And let's say that doesn't particularly go the way you see it. But something else comes out that's so much more um, powerful or so much more amazing than what you can even think in your mind. So when that a person can go to that space, they just really never know what's going to come out of it from going there. I feel like when they take a chance creatively, they're putting abundance into the universe. And and even if they fail, like like you just said, something good is going to come out of it. Every project I've ever done, even if it didn't pan out, even if it didn't go the way I wanted it to, there were always side benefits that, that kind of emerged, even if it was a little later. Yes, yes. And too, I think when we think about goals, it's not so much a matter of, like, I know myself, when I set a goal, 
I have to have a timeline with that goal. Now, and I, I've kicked myself for this plenty of times where I'll have a timeline for it saying, well, this is when I want it to be done, but then something happens that derails me for whatever the reason are, is, but that doesn't mean it's not gonna get accomplished. So maybe rather than setting a timeline such as what I usually do is just say, okay, this is my goal. And however long it takes me to get there, I know I'm gonna get there. You know, and I, and I think that's an important factor too. So if there are people out there, our viewers who are out there who are like me, where they're like, all right, well, this is my time zone to, I'm gonna start the project this day. And by this day, it's gotta be finished. And I, and I actually learned that this year because I've, I, I, I've um, connected with a variety of different people on collaboration projects this year. And I've come to learn that when you collaborate with projects with people, collaborating, it's not just about you, it's about their schedule too. And sometimes it just doesn't work to what you think it should. Yeah. Yeah, I always, uh, whenever I work with a client on a larger project, like 30, 60 days, I always have two weeks uh, after final deadline, uh, just in case. I always reserve them and I say, okay, let's say we didn't meet this milestone. We didn't meet this deadline. Somebody's relative died, something happened. So, so we have some back padding on the end where we can catch up and we can get it done. So, so you're right. And I feel that, I feel that you should have a soft deadline if everything's optimal and you'll, you know, you'll, you'll hit your finish line and then you should have a hard deadline, you know, week or two out. So, yeah. So understanding that you're saying you're in agreement to having a timeline, so to speak, to when oh, yeah. that project should be finished. Oh, absolutely. I always, I have a, a system and I tell people, um, you can pretty much do anything if you have a timeline, a diagram and milestones. Milestones are just the small achievements on the way, the little tasks and, and finishers on the way to the main, main objective. Awesome, awesome, yeah. So those are three really great um, tips, I would say for our viewers that when they are looking to set a goal, and, and to be a, to accomplish the goal is like you just said, the, say it again. Oh, uh, a diagram, first of all. So I use Microsoft Visio. Microsoft Project is great too um, for creating and printing these things. So a diagram that lists out just the, the whole timeline and then milestones and then uh, a, a hard deadline. Awesome, awesome, yes. And with that being said, we do have to take a commercial break. So let the viewers know how they can reach you. Uh, they can hit me up on my main website, yournextlevelofsuccess.com. Awesome. And there's a flyer. So for the viewers who want to write that down, feel free to. We're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, stay with us because we're going to still have more with Robin and success on business. We'll be right back. Welcome, my name is Alex Vitilla, founder of Breathing Heart Consultancy. I work with art-centered coaches and consultants, soul-driven entrepreneur to heal past trauma and help you smash through the six-figure income ceiling in your business to create epic income and epic results and an epic impact onto Mother Earth. I've got an amazing offer, activate your world's consciousness, drop me a message. Hello everyone, my name is Irene Rodriguez and I'm the creator and founder of 100 Essential Women. Through 100 Essential Women, I create individualized waist beads for women that represent the relationship between a woman and her body. They are individualized pieces that represent her femininity, her divine feminine, her sensuality, and her spiritual well-being. If you're interested, please reach out at 100 Essential Women on my Instagram. Thank you, and I look forward to hearing from you. Hello, and welcome back to Joanne's Healing Within. For those of you who are just tuning in, I am your host, Joanne Angel Barry Cologne. I have my amazing guest, Dr. Robert Garcia here. 
who is our warrior strategist. We've been speaking about business success goals and um, not being afraid to fail, but to succeed. So we're gonna dive right into our conversation. For those of you who are just joining, remember to share, like, and comment. So again, Robert, in regards to how did you build enough strength? I'm gonna use the word to push through. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I started off, I, I really got into mental toughness uh, when I was getting my doctorate in education because it's, it's an unbelievably daunting journey and 50% of people give up uh, through the program. Um, I started doing beach runs and I started uh, reading books about special forces and just the ways that they really push through their, their mental walls because once all of us have walls in our minds and these walls are just, just uh, artificial restrictions that say, oh, I can, I can run maybe a mile. I can do maybe 30 push-ups. I can do whatever. And so champions, special forces, Olympians, people like you, very uh, engaged in the fitness industry, have pushed their walls out so far past the average person. And that's what I needed to do. So it, it started off with beach runs. And I, I graduated up to like eight mile beach runs at five in the morning. And that's, once you can push through that, your, your whole day, you, you don't care about anything else. Like nothing is, is ever going to be that hard. And so that was, that was the, the one way. And then just regular jogging, a little bit of weightlifting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I, so I, would, I would say for the average person, it's really about a mindset, changing one's mindset. And the one thing, the one word that I suggest all people to let go of, to destroy is the word I can't. Yeah. When one uses the word I can't in a conversation, they are setting themselves up for complete failure because when you tell yourself you can't do something, that's exactly what shows up. You can't do it. Can't, try, attempt. I don't use those three if I can help it. Awesome. Yeah, those, those three don't really work so well for me neither. You know, there's nothing we cannot do when we tell ourselves we can do. And I think that's the key component is that we have to tell ourselves we can, even if we don't know if we can. Because yeah. when we can get into that space where we can, even if we don't know, like if I work with a client and I ask them to give me 10 push-ups, and they look at me and say, well, I can't do 10 push-ups. Do you, do you know that for sure? You know, and if they look at me with that dumbfounded look like, well, no, well then try. Let's see what you can get out of 10 push-ups. And you might surprise yourself and see that you could do 10 push-ups. You know what I hear when I hear the word can't? I hear the word won't. Yes. Isn't that interesting? Yes. So yes. imagine your client just, it's, instead of saying can't, what they really said to you is, I won't do 10 push-ups. Exactly. Exactly. So it is really, a, it, yeah, it's a mindset of what it is we tell ourselves. And, and I think that's a real, the, the difference between those who are successful and those who are not successful. Your mindset. Oh, yeah. You know, if you wake up in the morning and you say to yourself, you know what, today is going to be a <laughs> successful day. You already set it out. It's going to be successful. So now all it is you have to do is put the action behind your success and make it happen. Oh, absolutely. So I know it's not one of your questions, but what does a successful day look like for you? For me personally, a successful day is when I can combine um, fitness. So I've gotten up, I've ran for, for 45 minutes. Um, I've met three new people online. And um, I've, I've made some type of crazy result for one of my clients, a positive result. I've, I've had people in the, last, in the last 30 days, I've had one client sell 15,000 in 10 days in consulting. I've had another person join one of my programs and make three sales within about five days. Uh, and these are the things that really, really fill me up. And you notice that none of this involves my own income, my own money or wealth. This has to do more with balance. And a, a good balanced day, like I said, is when I make the time to, to work out or to run. Um, I, I'm really focused on other people's success and when I'm branching out so I can meet new people so I can help them. Mm -hmm. Yes, and just for a moment, only because it really, it really uh, gets me excited. Just for a moment, let's talk about when we start our morning off now, which is something I don't do because I'm not really a morning person. Mine usually takes place midday or evening, but um, we're gonna start it off. You start your morning off working out, making that commitment to work out. I truly believe, and, and being in the industry for over 30 years, I believe that when we start our morning with a workout, kicking in those endorphins that you yeah. feel good, 
your mind feels good. So because you feel good, everything else is a, like a domino effect of feeling good. Now, when you have a day, because I'm sure you'll have days where you woke up and it's like, ah, don't have time to go do that workout right now because I woke up late. Now, what is your day like when you don't get a chance to do the workout first in the morning and you have to just dive into your second activity? What's that day like compared to the day when you got the workout in? It's not even close. And the, the one thing I do that's the equalizer, if I know I don't have time, because I'm, I do believe in the effectiveness of a 20 minute workout, but I also believe that I, I, I really prefer it when I can set aside 45 minutes and really get into it. And so the great equalizer is cold showers, believe it or not. That's what makes, I, I take them every single day. They make me alert. They, they're good for the testosterone. Um, and that's what, that, that's kind of, if you can't work out, that's the next best thing to at least get, get going. Yes, yes. And, and it's an interesting concept because as I was asking you the question in regards to when you can't work out, the reality is we're using the word can't. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I know my mindset is, you know what, whatever time of day it is, I mean, again, for you, you like to get your workouts done in the morning. For me, it's like, you know what? I know that in my day, somewhere in my day, it doesn't matter what time of day it is, as long as it's before 2 a.m., <laughs> I make sure I get my workouts in. As yeah. long as it's before 2 a.m., I make sure my workout gets in. No matter what day of the week it is, it has to happen. Yeah. And I'm sure you're the same way that you get it in, whether it's that 20-minute intense workout or your full-pledged 45-minute workout. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I try to, and that's, that's, uh, something to, I just said, try that's something <laughs> that, um, that I'm going to add to my schedule actually is just as a reminder, uh, because as a bigger guy, there's a certain amount of exercise that is absolutely required each week. If I'm not, if I'm not being very careful about my, my nutrition. Yes. Yeah. yes. And again, as you said too, <clears throat> to being successful, not just in business, but also your exercise regimen is putting it on the schedule, Yeah. putting it on the schedule. It's, you know, it's the same concept that you, if you know you want to meet three new clients for that week, you have to put it on a schedule of how that's going to happen for you. Yeah. So if exercising for you is that important where it gives you the mindset and the endurance to push through your day, then making sure that workout gets into your schedule first thing in the morning so you could be successful in your day. So it's planning mm -hmm. it out. You're absolutely right. Planning it out. So again, whether it's business related <coughs> or exercise related and, and in some weird kind of way, I feel like they're connected. Oh, absolutely. And, and here's what's interesting. I'm, I'm a magazine owner and a lot of the very successful people I've met have a regular routine that always involves exercise, journaling, meditation, and yoga. Those four things. And, and a, a lot of them, you'd be shocked how many millionaires and billionaires follow that religion. <laughs> it, it makes sense because when you think about the four things you mentioned, all of that is about the mindset, the mind, body, and spirit. Yeah. And when your mind and spirit are connected to your body, it's a successful plan because everything's connected. It's not a disconnect. And I think that makes a lot of sense to being successful is that you're tuning in to yourself. You're getting that understanding of who you are on a deeper level. You're journaling, which means you're putting out on paper, whatever your thoughts are. And you are moving into that space of mindfulness and quiet when you go through the process of meditation and yoga. And depending on the, the person's practice of meditation, like I, I myself, when I meditate, I love meditating in regards to chakra balance alignment and also uh, visual meditation. The two for me, the visual meditation helps me to visualize what it is I'm looking to accomplish. And the chakra balance align alignment helps me to align my energy to accomplish the thing I'm visualizing. So for me, it's not about just sitting in quiet and being uh, in silence. Mine is very active when I meditate. And I know that there are other people who sit in pure quiet and they just take in the Zen moment. What's your meditation like? I don't meditate right now. Oh, okay. uh, I have it in a long time. And it's one of those things that, that I'd love to incorporate uh, in the near future. I just, I just haven't, I haven't done nearly as much journaling as I want to as well. 
Yeah, journaling too, for, for whatever the reasons are, I've been doing a lot of writing, but not specifically journaling. And there's a lot to be said about journaling. I mean, yeah. whatever type of journaling one wants to do, as long as whatever it is, and you're taking your, your thoughts and putting it down on paper, it does help. It really does. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So my next question to you that I'd like to ask is, what makes you happy? Changing someone's life, without a doubt. There, there is no greater joy that I've discovered as an adult as the ability to teach someone something and uh, have them implement it, and it makes a, a, a drastic upgrade in their life. You know, if they, my, my the uh, member that just reached out the other day, she she was sleeping and had a two thousand dollars sale while she was asleep. She just had her system set up, and she she put the word out. She went to bed, woke up, two thousand dollars in the bank, and she was overjoyed. That is the level of, uh, that's what makes me happy. That's the level of success that I want for everybody I work with. Well, well then I wanna make you happy because there's one thing that I have learned while listening to a lot of your live Facebooks that you do and, and sitting in on some of your um, group sessions that you do is this whole process of getting on Facebook lives, doing videos, doing live videos, doing posts, and not realizing like how important that is in reference to like getting people to to uh, recognize what it is that you do. It's not just posting things, but the visibility of having a video where I'm presenting something, it could be a live video and it could be a, an actual audio video where people are seeing whatever's going on. That's all in contribution to the things that I've learned from you. Oh. So I wanna thank you for that. You're welcome. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. And I, um, a lot of my stuff came from my, my visibility course. I started a while back and it was called tactical CEQ. And I taught that any expert that, uh, produces good social media that does a lot of interviews that aligns with celebrities and influencers and teaches their industry. Those four things will have a, a much greater chance of success because you're hitting visibility in different areas. Awesome. Awesome. So with that being said, we have another commercial break that we have to take. So let the viewers know how they can reach you. Uh, they can reach out to me over Facebook or just uh, the, the main website, yournextlevelsuccess.com. Awesome. Awesome. So for our viewers, we're going to be right back, but stay with us when we get back. We'll be right back, guys. Hey everybody, Rob the Warrior Strategist coming at you from San Diego, California. And if you want help developing your own income streams and entrepreneurial systems, feel free to reach out to me at dragonsgold76 at gmail.com. Thanks. Hello, my name is Nick Rafter. Though it may not seem like it, now is actually a good time to sell or buy a home. And I can help you with that. I'm a real estate agent with great knowledge of the markets in New York City and Long Island and I can help price your home and get it sold or find you one at a great price. I can also help you rent as well. So give me a call at 347-610-9765 or at nrafter at corcoran.com. Let's find you the perfect home. Hi, my name is Diana Brandt. I'm a business consultant. If you always wanted to be an entrepreneur and you've got these dreams, you no longer have to have them in your head. I help you with the steps. I'm offering a 15 minute complimentary call and you can reach me at diana.caremore at gmail.com. Thank you for the opportunity. Hello and welcome back to Joanne's Healing Within. For those of you who are just tuning in, I'm your host, Joanne Angel Barry Colon, and I have my amazing guest, Dr. Robert Garcia, he's the warrior strategist. And we were just chatting between the commercial break. And that one question that you um, would like me to ask you is regards to what is, um, what is the one thing that, what was the question again? My mind. <laughs> just the, the importance uh, iterating uh, uh, stepping out of comfort and, okay. and how you and I uh, have, have done that for greater success in our lives. And so I kind of flipped the script on you, Joanne, because I want to know sometime when you have stepped out of comfort. Yeah, that's why I, that's why I sort of like lost it there. I'm like, what? He's going to put it on me. <laughs> well, that's really interesting because it is really, really funny because uh, the one thing that 
took me out of my comfort zone, which uh, Bobby behind the scenes is gonna laugh about this one, is literally being on my TV show. Because theoretically before the pandemic, I would travel out to Long Island to go to my TV show and I do not do highways. So traveling on a highway to get there was the most scariest thing that I can ever imagine doing. And in my back of my head, I literally thought about it. I'm like, okay, so how much do I really want to have a TV show? And what is this TV show going to do for me if I were to do it? Or am I going to let my fear of not driving on expressways and parkways get in the way? I literally had my sister a week before my show take me in my car. We drove on the expressway so I can be comfortable enough to drive on the expressway to get to Long Island. Now, let's be honest here. I do get on one expressway, but I get to one expressway and then I get off and then I take a long way, which is basically the side roads to get to where I gotta go because it's that important for me to be on my TV show. But that's like my biggest fear that I had. And I'm still struggling with it because theoretically I, I could probably get to my TV show in like, let's say a half hour, but it takes me an hour to get there. So when I'm not at my gym doing the show as I am today, I am driving an hour to get to my show and an hour back home. So theoretically, my TV show takes up three hours of my time because it's that important to me. But that's my biggest fear. That was my, I would say my biggest fear of, of success, so to speak. I mean, there are others, but uh, I would say if, if I had to weigh it out and say, what's the biggest one? That one is because I'm still struggling with it. You know, I do it, but I still struggle with it. I, I love that. And it's such a great example. And I hope anyone watching this really takes a minute and appreciates how brave you were to do that and really looks into their own life at whatever it is that they're scared of or they're fearing. And, and understand that it's important that we get over these things. Like uh, my biggest one in the last couple of years was starting a magazine, zero experience, zero idea of, of any of it. And I just went and did it. And in that four years, it's become a great income stream. I've interviewed a lot of celebrities. You've been in the magazine. It, it's, it's one of those things where desire must uh, outweigh fear. Exactly. And that's another thing that, that you're inspiring me to eventually do, because that's something I like to eventually do as well, is start up my own magazine. I figure, you know what, I have a TV show, I have a radio show, I have my own studio. <laughs> uh, what, I need one more thing, right? I need the magazine, I think. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> got to add it to the list. Why not? I have, you know, why not? Build so, the yeah. empire. Exactly, exactly. I got I got to hit all avenues, I guess, so to right. speak, when you think about it. Yeah. So with that being said, what I like to do, I ask all my guests if um, if they'd be interested in receiving a cosmic energy soul reading. And I like to ask you the same. Would you be interested and open to receiving one? In a New York minute. All right. So <laughs> how this works is I'd like you to repeat your full name that's on your birth certificate three times out loud. Robert Lee Garcia, Robert Lee Garcia, Robert Lee Garcia. Awesome. The next question, would you like to ask a question that you would like guidance on or would you like the universe to provide you guidance? I would like the universe to provide me guidance. All right. That's like the million dollar question. It's like the way I ask it and in the end, the question, the answer is I would like. <laughs> so let's see what the universe has for you. Let's see. Now, is this the first time you've ever had a reading with me? Yes. Ah. All right. So what we have here is comic completion. And what that basically means, are you familiar with comic cycles? Not familiar with a comic cycle. No. A comic cycle is you ever hear the expression, uh, be careful what you do because uh, you have comic, the comic will come back at you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So basically when we talk about a karmic cycle, it means that you have completed a cycle of energy that um, you've done the work on and you no longer need it. So that cycle has completed. Okay. When we are in the process of completing a cycle, it's very important to stay grounded. Mm -hmm. Otherwise what tends to happen is we tend to fall into the fear, which is what we've been talking about a lot. And we tend to say, well, wait, you know what? It was easy to stay where I was than to push through this new, new goal 
and you fall backwards because the karmic completion is letting you know that you've completed a cycle. You don't have to do it anymore. So it's time to move into something brand new that you may not even be aware that it's coming. The one energy is letting you know that there is a new door that's opening for you. Wherever, whatever that door is leading you to could be the unknown, but it's an opportunity for you to sit back and say yes. Sit back and say yes to whatever it might be for you. Another thing I want to bring into this in addition, just your month and day you're born, not the year. August 30th. Okay, so August 30th, 11, which is two, four. Ah, you're in your, what we call your personal year of six in numerology. And what that means, this particular year, this was your year to heal on a deeper level, like really zooming in on the things that might have tripped you up, so to speak, and let go of. That's what this year is all about. Really tapping into knowing, like when you give yourself that name, the, the warrior strategist, that's a powerful name. And in order to carry that name, you do need to go through all the healing modalities of it, like whatever holds you back. And for that matter, in regards to when, we think, when I think about the healing process and you, what things, and this is not something you have to answer, just insight, what things you've endured as a child that has led you to this journey to wanting to be the warrior strategist? Because those things as a child that you experience is what led you here. But you also healed from those things, whether you're aware of it or not. And they have actually helped you to become the best version of who you are and who you're still becoming. Okay? Like the whole concept behind when I used the word healer, the average person would say, well, a healer is someone who does, let's say, Reiki or acupuncture or Tai Chi or uh, psychics. But you yourself as a healer for those in business and healing, helping people to heal from their misconception or fears of what a business can look like. And you're doing that as the healer because you are the, the warrior strategist. So you are helping people in business heal their businesses. And even for that matter, start their business based on every time you do a Facebook Live or you, you go into one of your um, Zoom sessions, there's somebody in that audience you are tapping into and you are changing their lives. And that makes you a healer based on the energy of this year. How's that sound to you so far? Very accurate, dead accurate. And as we move into 2021, you're gonna become the seeker. And what the seeker is, is someone who is a spiritually awakening. So you are moving into your spiritual awakening attributes as well. And when you had said before about right now, you're not really meditating and you're not doing much journaling, it would not surprise me at all if over the next couple of weeks, you find yourself moving into that trend because being in that personal year of seven, which is next year's energy, is where you're going. And by doing that, you're going to really seek a different version of you on a deeper level where the work that you've been doing up until this point is going to become even more powerful than it's been already. If you can even imagine that. Again, how's that resonate? It's, it's amazing. It's uh, it's in perfect alignment with my, my business. Awesome. Awesome. So yes. Yeah, so, so we started off with the comic completion. So you've completed a cycle. And you are definitely in alignment to the healing work, healing yourself specifically. And by healing yourself, you become such a better, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A better mirror is the word I just heard. A better mirror for those who are connected with you. Because one of the most important things that I truly believe is that we are mirrors of each other. So when someone is looking at you and they're seeing how successful you are, that's what they see about themselves because they're able to see how successful you are. When someone looks at you and says, wow, Robert is devoted and committed and, and disciplined, that's what they see about themselves. Very rare can I sit back and say that a person sees you as being anything else but successful. And when that's a mirror, which they get to see for themselves. And it's a great mirror. You're reflecting out a lot of positive greatness energy for all those who come in alignment with you. So continue, continue doing what you're doing and know that as you move into next year's energy, you're going to be doing a lot of seeking and spiritually 
awakening to a much higher level because there's so much more for you to be doing. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And with that being said, my final question before we go to a commercial break again, what did you learn about yourself in COVID-19 and the pandemic? I learned that I needed to fix my business and my processes so that I would withstand it versus using it as an excuse for my businesses to fail like a lot of people do. Ooh, that is powerful. That is powerful. And when we really think about that, what you learned and you know what we're all experiencing with the pandemic, the pandemic is a perfect, I'm gonna either I'm gonna use two words, a perfect opportunity or a perfect excuse for your business to either fail or succeed. It's and a mindset either, test. Exactly, because um, it, it, it is a process that you can sit back and say, well, due to the pandemic, I wasn't able to attract the clients that I needed, so I had to close the door of my business. Or due to the pandemic, I became laser focused on the way I need to do this, and I have to find another way of doing it so I can succeed and push through. So yeah, I, I love the fact that that's what you learned about yourself during this period of time. So again, thank you so much for being here today and sharing the success of, of you know, the mindset, mindset of success and loving the word success because I know there were many people out there who struggle with the confidence of being successful and you own it very well. So own it well, it looks good on you, continue doing what you're doing and know that you have a very powerful year coming ahead of you as we move into 2021. And I'm looking forward to uh, uh, watching and listening and just being a part of your world and you know, you helping me do what I do in my day. So thank you. Thank you so much, Joanne, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Let the viewers know how they can reach you one last time. Uh, you can find me on Facebook under Rob the Warrior Strategist business page, or you can reach out on my main website, yournextlevelofsuccess.com. And again, Robert, thank you so much for being here. Or should I say Dr. Robert Garcia, thank you so much for being here today. It was a pleasure. Thank you. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Stay with me as I come right back. Declutter your body, declutter your space. Reverend Joanne Angel Barry Cologne, holistic trainer and intuitive healer, and Aphrodite Marissus, Feng Shui interior design consultant, teamed up to write Declutter, Reshape, and Feng Shui to guide you toward a re-energized and balanced body and space. Available on Amazon. Are you ready for solutions and connections? If so, I can help. Hi, I'm Tammy Moses, and I help the peripheral people resolve hoarding issues in a holistic way. I would love to connect with you and learn more about how I can help in your unique situation. Please send me an email to thehoardingsolution at gmail.com. I look forward to connecting with you. Hello and welcome back to Joanne's Healing Within. For those of you who are just tuning in, I'm your host, Joanne Angel Barry Cologne. And you're going to have to come back and watch the show from the beginning as you missed an amazing guest I had, which is Dr. Robert Garcia, our warrior strategist. He provided amazing information about business success, failures, and so much more. So please come back and watch. For those of you who are still here though, share, like, and comment on today's show. I'd like to remind you, I'm sure there's a flyer. I'm currently offering a seven week crystal healing class. That class can help you have a successful business. So for more information, just read that flyer and then you can email for signing up. You can email at healingwithin76 at gmail.com. Those of you who do sign up between today through October 20th, I think it's 23rd, you'll get the special rate of $111. Thereafter, the rate goes back up. So sign up as early as you can to reserve your spot for that. And also, I'm really excited to be sharing another book that I have launched with an amazing co-author. Um, co that book will be launching on October 22nd, which is this week. So stay tuned for a lot of Facebook Lives about that. So you can go ahead and purchase the book and perhaps help make that book a bestseller. 
With all that being said, I look forward to seeing each and every one of you next week. Have yourself a great week and think about being successful this week. Till then, bye-bye for now.